Why is this happening now and why do you think that, the, that there's been such a domino effect? Well, I think uh, that part of the world, there's an enormous resentment among young people, among the middle classes, and those who uh, are unemployed. There's huge unemployment in that part of the world. But perhaps most important, the Middle East is really the last part of our world in which democratic values have not been uh, present, in which representative government is a rarity, in which people's ability to re, uh, to reflect their views, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, all of those values that we take uh, so seriously here haven't really existed in that part of the world. You combine that with economic uh, problems, with uh, deep poverty in some areas, and the, the potential for an explosion is always there. I think because in our modern age, what what happens in one country is seen in another. When the uh, protests emerged in Tunisia and when they were successful, when the uh, dictator was forced to flee and democratic change came to that country, that gave encouragement and uh, potential to many, many people in the rest of the region who'd, who'd wished for change and wanted to see it happen in their country. And in your experience, do you think that we can lump together all of these countries, or are there certain differences, let's say, from between Tunisia and Egypt that people are, are overlooking? There are huge differences between many of these countries. I think the, the single thread, however, is the lack of democratic values, the lack of representative government in that part of the world. But take Tunisia and Egypt, for example. In Tunisia, the crucial factor there was that the military was a very independent institution and would not let the police, on behalf of its dictator, uh, crack down on the population and, and uh, commit heavy violence against the protesters and repress them. They stood between the security services, the police, and the people. Now, in Egypt, it's a slightly different situation and significantly different in that the president, Mubarak, who's been president for 30 years, was a former senior Air Force officer. Uh, he came from the military. He has very, very strong ties with the military, and that's why you saw the military called in last night, and uh, the situation is very different in terms of the support the military has for their leader. Will they, in the end, however, uh, support him enough uh, if it comes to real violence and the need to, to really uh, use military force and repression against the civilians? Nobody knows the answer to that question. And we're actually getting a question from our chat room. Rick, what are we hearing? Um, chat room wants to know what type of government might replace Mubarak and what is Israel's response to this? Well, right now, the Israelis are, frankly, quite nervous. Uh, they uh, would regard uh, President Mubarak, along with King Abdullah of Jordan, as the two closest leaders in the Arab world. Those two countries have peace agreements with Israel, and Mubarak has been a partner uh, in many important activities, including cracking down on Hamas, the uh, terrorist organization in Gaza, which sits between Egypt and Israel. So they're worried. Uh, they don't know what's going to come next. And you always uh, worry about uh, a situation where there's so much instability and potential chaos. As far as what will happen, uh, again, I don't think anybody knows, except to say that it, uh, Egypt is a uh, society, a civilization that has, you know, uh, roots thousands of years back to the the pharaohs, and they have had a central government. This is not a chaotic Somalia-like situation where you could imagine a failed state. They have a constitution. Uh, if they follow the constitution, as I understand it, the speaker of the parliament would uh, be a temporary leader until elections could be held. The key would be for those elections to be held in such a way that uh, many different uh, Egyptian political organizations could get involved, would have the time to organize, would have the time to build a platform and, and win votes. Unfortunately, the only political organization that now exists uh, outside of uh, the government is the Muslim Brotherhood, which uh, poses, uh, you know, some real challenges for us in the West. Well, I guess we'll all be watching to see what does happen. Thank you so much, Jamie. I don't want to take any more of your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be